Louisiana Beer Reviews. Bayou Tesh Joy A2. Owned by Bayou Tesh Brewing of Bayou Tesh, Louisiana, and brewed for them by Lazy Magnolia Brewing Company of Kiln, Mississippi. This is a gift beer. Even has a little tag on it too from. You can give it to someone. Uh, it's about eight to nine dollars a bottle, so they're not giving it away. It's an ale brewed with coffee and aged in whiskey barrels. I was disappointed because the website um, didn't really give us the alcohol content. In fact, the website doesn't even have the Joe Altu on there. Uh, Beer Advocate said it was 5%. I don't know. I wish I could find that out. And I don't see any dates or anything. Boy, if Greg's Beer Reviews was doing this, he'd flip out because he gets so angry with the bottles not having any dates, full dates or production dates. And I, I agree with that. Okay. Um, it's only made for the uh, Christmas season, and it just came out in 2012. Uh, There's only two reviews on Beer Advocate, and one was favorable, one was saying it was okay. Uh, there are no reviews for this on Rape Beer. In fact, it's not even shown on Rape Beer or on the Beer in Me, so it's pretty rare, and there are certainly no video reviews, so this is the first video review for this beer in the world, and we're recording this at the Therns Grocery Store in Laplace, Louisiana. You can see the wide array of beer offerings I have here. Swilling Grog from Australia, Queensland, Australia said they didn't have any kind of store like that over there with this sort of selection. Swilling Grog, you got to come over here to Louisiana and we'll do a very beer oriented um, vacation type thing. Very beer oriented. Okay. And I need to go to Australia and uh, tour the country, so to speak. Okay, do see some smoke. I don't know if it's showing up. There's a lot of bubbles right up at the top already soaking uh, bubbles. Oh, the coffee they use is Mellow Joy for your information. Okay, well, we get a thick. colored head or egg shell, you know, farm egg shell colored head, it's very soapy. The appearance is, well, I'd say amber, and it's not the clearest beer in the world, it's sort of hazy. I see a lot of screaming bubbles, though. Probably not showing up there, but I see lots of screaming bubbles. Let's go with the smell evaluation. That's a weird smell. You really can pick up this coffee, the, the ground or roasted coffee. And you pick up the sweet barley malt and a little hop sting and so it it smells like beer. That's what coffee is really what it smells like. I say medium roast coffee. I don't, it's not dark roast. Uh, <clears throat> well, it smells good. Let's go with the flavor. a very strong coffee note. I mean, it's the first thing to hit you is just coffee beans. Uh, somehow mint. I'm thinking mint. This is like a coffee with mint. I don't know. That, that can't be right, but it, you do. It does taste like you just gulped coffee. some sweetness and some background breadiness and a slight hop sting. And I'm thinking they must be right. Somehow maybe Beer Advocate, someone there contacted the brewery and found out it's 5% because it doesn't really, you don't pick up any alcohol. It does have that moderate alcohol presentation with it. Like, um, you know, Budweiser's 5% alcohol. I always use Budweiser as a good benchmark because most people have had Budweiser and it's 5%, so you can relate to that. Um, 
little bit of lacing, not a whole lot, little splotches of lacing, sort of a camouflage type lacing. The mouth feel, it is really on the watery side. It's not, it's light to medium, okay, it's not super light, but it's light to medium in the mouth feel and the finish. is pretty dry it's sort of crisp in a lager like way and um, could be coming from the coffee and it's pretty drinkable I'm not sure about the taste um, oh I'll drink coffee every morning I can assure you but and I drink beer every day not necessarily every morning <laughs> all right uh, Oh, I'm, I don't always drink beer. I think since 1996, there's probably been four or five days in those 16 years I haven't drank beer, I'm sure. Um, maybe one or two and I haven't drank coffee. Um, well, get a little cloud up. say about this. Uh, it's got such an unusual flavor. Such an unusual flavor. You sure can't accuse it of being dull. Um, and you've, you've, if you've watched enough of my videos, you know my opinion about flavored beer. I do have a general animosity towards flavored beer because my attitude is just uh, to the beer companies. Just make good beer. You don't have to be gimmicky. But that's the that's the, the time we live in here and in our world is... Uh, Lots of gimmick beers and a lot of cutesy names. Those two things get on my nerves. Um, but it's, that's a result of this massive amount of competition. They're always trying to get an angle and get their foot in the door and get people's attention. But um, um, I'm gonna give it a B minus. It's good, sorta, but. It's, I bet you when I sit down in a little while to write the written reviews and I keep sipping on it, it's going to improve. Like, I have a tendency to like beers more as I drink them down. They grow on me. Uh, that wasn't the case with Earthquake 12% alcohol or the um, Dog Bite. Those did not grow on me. Those made me ill and Earthquake made me get very ill. Okay, I'm going to go into all that. But anyway, I think this is going to improve as I drink it down, but I'm going to give it a B- minus for my initial taste. It's sort of good, but on the interesting scale, yes, it's very high. I think you should try it just for the peculiar, peculiarity of it. So, Les Les Bon Ton Roube. This is a good beer if you, if you want to go along with that. It's sort of good beer. And I'm going to end this review by saying, y'all come on down to Matherns and check out their huge selection.